Hello, all my beautiful people. It is time once again for another amazing episode of If You Give a Data Podcast. So this week I have with me somebody who creates music. But not just any kind of music. He creates metal and rock music for kids. Um, what I'm talking about is a guy by the name of Mike Whitla. He is the creator of Howdy Tunes. And I have him on this week to talk about his music, his influences in music, and a lot of other really good subjects. And I can't wait for you guys to hear it. And for those people who have tuned in just to hear the Mike Whitla episode, I hope that you enjoy what you hear. And I hope that you stick around to find some other episodes that you may like as well. Because here we have all different kinds of subjects, for all different kinds of people. I am very excited to have this week's guest on. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. So, if you are as excited as I am, then let's get the show on the road. If you give a dad a podcast. Hey, Dad. Get back in your car. Go. (laughs) Get out of here. You can't be here. I wasn't about to call you Dad, so... (laughs) Seriously? Just for the, you know, the, the work rate, brother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, she said he looked like an old piece of leather. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Supernatural, which is by far one of my favorite shows, and I will be talking a lot about Supernatural. I will be quoting Supernatural. Bro. I just remember, because they also, everybody, whenever they came to the ring, goes, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> What? Okay, before I get started, you ever had a design in mind and you wanted to put it on a shirt or a hat or a cup, but you just didn't know who to go to? Well, come on over to R&L Designs where they make all of your custom needs come true. They make custom hats, they make custom shirts, they make custom mugs, they even do the tumblers and the glass mugs as well. They do key fobs even. They have great prices and they have a reasonable turnaround time. If you need anything custom, these are the people that you need to hit up today. You can find them on Facebook, and that is at R&L Designs. You can also find them on Instagram at R&L Designs 19. They have a Facebook page. They have an Instagram page. They update it regularly with new products. You can also message them if you have something in mind. Hit them up today for all of your custom needs. Give them a like, give them a follow. All right, everybody. So today I have with me a man who makes some really cool music for kids. Um, He actually makes... It's rock and metal-inspired music for children. He has some really cool songs that I've got to listen to online about dinosaurs. And I recently have found this, uh, and I am so excited to have him on today to kind of talk about his music. Mike Whitla, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, Jared. Thanks so much for having me on, and thanks for the kind words. I appreciate that. Yeah. So... How did you actually get into making music for children? Um, well, I used, I've used i been teaching music and working as a freelance musician, always writing musician. You're always doing different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then at, at one point, uh, my wife saw this ad for this uh, a company just you know that needed someone to do something. And I started, it was a, a, a gig teaching kids some music. Uh huh. And then uh, it turned out I was pretty good at it, so I ended up starting a program called Rainbow Songs, which ended up teaching, and I developed a program for teaching music to really young kids, oh. uh, and developed a method, and then started doing all this stuff. Uh, this is all before I, st- I started doing Howdy Tunes, but as that thing was going, uh, and I had my own kids, and they were into dinosaurs, and I thought, where is all the really great dinosaur songs right and I, was thinking, well, I can't really you know i wanted to you know have some songs to play them and i couldn't really think of like a really great song about a 
Parasaurolophus or, a, you know, or even a, a good good song about a T-Rex. So, yeah, uh, I started, you know, thinking about that and I started writing songs about dinosaurs. And that turned into my first record called uh, the Dinosaur, the ultimate dinosaur rock opera. That was a little <laughs> bit. That was the thing that ended up becoming Howdy Tunes. OK, well, I, Howdy Tunes um, is actually become pretty popular from what I've heard. Uh, you've got somewhere uh, around a billion views on YouTube, from what I could, from what I gathered, and you get around somewhere about ten million a day. No, no, that's ten million a month. I wish 10, ten million, million a month. Okay, I was like, wow, that is <laughs> that million. is just that's insane. <laughs> so ten, 10 million. million a day is crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, but still, I'm pretty happy with ten million a month. Ten and million uh, a month is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's on YouTube, and there's like this the, we're streaming stuff. Right. We actually hadn't we hadn't put any. I got so well. The fun the funny thing was like so I had done this dinosaur rock opera, and I thought I was really happy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I I, uh, I dedicated that first record to my first manager that worked for Rainbow Songs. So when I got this great manager, I had some extra time, and that kind of let gave me like the the brain power to be able to do this other project. Oh, awesome. And. Uh, and then uh, w when that project was done, I was like, I was really pleased with it. So I thought, you know, I could maybe do a play with this. And then I had a friend that actually does uh, robots for Cirque du Soleil and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Uh, so I thought, started talking to him about it. He said, yeah. And then, it's, and then it was like, these are going to cost millions of dollars to make. I thought, well, what? So that, that's when I had the idea of doing some animation. So I, I did a couple of a test test uh, animation of a song I, uh, that I did, actually, which is one of the first let me think about the guitar around here. The first song I came up with, because the cool thing about uh, dinosaur names, I don't uh -huh. know if you can hear this. Or not. Can you hear the guitar there? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. So I thought, you know, Brachiosaurus, uh, you know, and then, so I just popped notes on it. I went. So the first song that that we did a video for was called Brachiosaurus, 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for some reason, I just kept making a couple of videos. And then we had been down to this conference and we got uh, worked with another company called Speakaboos. And then on, and then they launched it on this their platform that they had. And on the day they launched it, we got a little blip on YouTube. And mm-hmm. I think that might have been kind of what got some people seeing the video. And then it just kind of started rolling that video. And uh, that video now, I think, is something something like 60 million views. Uh, wow. And so, and then we just kept making the other one. So I'd done the first record and mm-hmm. then I decided uh, to continue on doing it. And I did a second record and then we did another record called Heavy Metal Dinosaur Songs. And it seemed that people, people seemed to really gravitate to the uh, more he- heavily influenced music that, yeah. uh, that that was on, even though there's all kinds of stuff on there. Right. Um, I don't know which, which records you, you had heard, but because um, I know you had mentioned Velociraptors being a song you had heard. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I don't think that was on. That's not on the new record coming out because that was on. Uh, that was on heavy metal dinosaur songs, uh, and it's actually actually part of the second season of Dinosaur Story. When. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then the other one was uh, the Kraken. Oh, the Kraken! Yeah. Yes. The Kraken actually is an ex- uh, exciting uh, song for us because okay. uh, it represents the first song that my my son wrote. Oh, cool! So that's my son Jake. Uh, I was running out of some material. I was had been writing, I animated everything. And so I said, hey, why don't you take a stab at writing something? He He's studying music. He plays saxophone as well as bass and guitar. And uh, he wrote that with a buddy of his, uh, Dove Beck Levine. Uh-huh. Uh, and he got me and Jimmy, uh, another writing partner who I work on with another project called Prehistorica, which is songs about woolly mammoths and things like that. And uh, we added a little bit to it, but it's basically his tune. So, well, that's cool. And, and that's the next video that's going to be coming out as well. Okay. And I know that you do have an album that's coming out. Is it September? Or is it this month that it comes out? The thirtieth. Yep, September thirtieth. Uh, okay. Called Dinosaurs and Monsters. Yeah, that's so. that sounds like that's going to be a pretty cool album. And I know that you do have merch out there too, because I was kind of looking through that myself and I, I think I'm going to have to end up uh, grabbing something off of there. <laughs> Thanks. That's a, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. You can get all, all that stuff. You know, if you're anyone's interested in that stuff, they can go to howdy tunes.com, which is H O W D Y. And it's tunes T O O N S not T U N E S. Cause okay. uh, that's kind of a bit of the, yeah. So it's howdy tunes.com and you can get links to our merch and that stuff there. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think that I got a link to your, your link tree, which those things are a lifesaver. I have a link they tree are. that I use as well. So they, uh, they're they awesome to have. I mean, then you're just like, yeah, here's one place that you can get everything. It makes keep it simple for people, especially as people are on their phones all the time these days. Yes. And I know that they also have QR codes that you can get with that now, too. So that makes it really easy. My wife made me a T-shirt that has my podcast on the front and says, if you give a dad a podcast and then it has a big QR code on the back that people can scan. So, uh, you know, awesome. I can You're a walking advertisement. Exactly. You know, advertise any way you can, as much as you can. That's what I say. Sure. You have two boys, correct? I do. Okay. Do they both play music? They both play. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle, my younger one had been playing drums, mm-hmm. but, uh, has, has switched to guitar. Okay. Uh, he he doesn't uh, he plays mostly for fun, but we also do play in a band. Another friend of mine comes over and plays drums. Okay. Uh, and uh, Jake plays bass in that band and sings. Uh, wow. And uh, I play guitar in that band. But we also and sometimes we we get together and play jazz with another different ba- bass player, and he plays. Uh, Jake switches over to saxophone. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, that switchover is probably a lot of fun. Absolutely. Do you do all the animation yourself too? I know that you were talking about uh, working with animation and all that. Do you do the drawings? I wish I, I had a talent in that area, but uh, I, for different projects, I use different animators. So I, I write all the music and then after that, what we do is we take the music and mm-hmm. then we make a really, really crude video. Uh, okay. It's basically like a moving script. Um, I call it a video script. Uh-huh. And uh, we give that to the animator. And so the the guy who does the dinosaur stuff, it's all the same guy. 
Okay. I actually, believe it or not, I put an ad on Craigslist looking for uh, adver- uh, advertising for animators. And then I, when I met him, I was like, oh, <laughs> I just knew we were going to work together. So we've done it's It's an unusual way to work in animation because usually there's a whole team of people that do it because it's really time intensive. But right. we do all those together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I started some other projects. And since I, he's busy all the time doing the dinosaur animation. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I also work with teams in India, which does another project of mine called Prehistorica. Okay. Uh, so the, which is uh, w- songs about woolly mammoths and megalodon, and we've got mm-hmm. one about a terror bird called Titanus, which is uh, also pretty fun. Do Do you have one about a saber tooth tiger? Saber tooth tiger is in the works. In the works. Uh, okay. Saber tooth tigers have appeared in those other songs because they were uh, the terror birds. Uh, ended up battling them so they're in that they're in some of the other songs but we haven't de- done a whole song yet we, sometimes it takes a long time i know when uh i don't know if you've heard my song called spinosaurus but when uh we would get we had literally thousands and thousands of requests to do a spinosaurus song so i took it took me about four years to write that song so whenever i'd have a really kind of really because do you know what who spinosaurus is i do yes okay <laughs> I actually, was, I, I've watched the song already too, so the video for oh, okay. it. Okay, so so what uh, with that song, uh, I whenever I'd get a really kind of nasty sounding riff, mm-hmm. I would just open up this file called Spinosaurus and put it in there. So I kept okay. putting all these things and making this big bank of riffs. And then uh-huh. I went in there after a couple of years and started working with it. And then just, it took a long time for that song to evolve. Uh-huh. Uh, but and I like I also save the song on every every day, uh-huh. so I can go back and see the song in the in the way that it. At some point, I want to maybe make a video to show how how a song like that can get written and how much it can change from the beginning to the end. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So, yeah, w- and I've done actually I did that on another channel that uh, that we have called Howdy Tunes Extreme, mm-hmm. which has like some behind the scenes stuff and some content that's. I think the one Kraken video we're going to make for that channel and one for the other one that's a Just for Kids channel. Okay. Yeah, we've done that one already on that channel that shows how we do the animation process, how I start with the video script and then go to something called an animatic. And then the, and the, like a lot of the times it's the animation is little videos of me dancing around like a dinosaur to the music. <laughs> saying, you know. So the underwater ones, I remember I was doing it, I had these... Uh, stools laying down and I lay down on the stools and like pretended I was swimming and, mm-hmm. and so I don't know if I put those online yet or not but that's what I was just about to ask you are the the videos of you pretending to be the dinosaurs are they yeah, out there for people they are, to find? they are online they're on Howdy Tunes <laughs> Extreme I don't I, the, the, they are available to be seen <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out <laughs> So I I know that there's a lot of, um, I I hear a lot of rock and metal influences in your music. So I'm guessing, would you consider yourself to be a metalhead? Uh, There's a metalhead inside me for sure. I'm not the kind of person that listens to only metal. I get you. Uh, And then there, because there are metalheads that are like that. I I come at it from what would be, would be kind of called, uh, it's funny because it goes through phases of good, uh, being a good word and a bad word, prog, yes. uh, which which when I listen to the stuff that became prog, like uh, in the I think like bands like Yes and Genesis, mm-hmm. um, and I suppose like I though the way I got into those th- kind of things were bands like uh, Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, and Pink Floyd's I think kind of the the gateway to a lot of those kind of bands because they really experimented a lot, and the Beatles too. Yes, yeah. The beat, like the experimentation of those later albums of the Beatles, mm-hmm. like you can see a direct line from the Beatles to Pink Floyd, to you know bands like Queen, and then it's funny because metal kind of became, it kind of comes out of those. Some of it kind of comes out of those kind of musics, but it yes. kind of became heavy all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I like all the other stuff too. So I love, I love jazz. I love classical music. I'm like. You know, I'm a huge Thelonious Monk fan, and I love John Coltrane. I love Charlie Parker. I love Duke Ellington. You know, I also love funk. I love, uh, I love Prince. Prince is really uh, an interesting guy in that he's kind of he has a, a couple of feet in the rock camp too. Yes, uh, all kinds of music. 
Let's, basically. I'm actually the same way. I can go from, I'm actually one that can go from listening to Metallica to Luciano Pavarotti. You know, I, I can go on any end of the spectrum and I'm going to find something that I like. I was raised around um, Southern gospel music and, you know, kind of the country vibe music and everything, but I have learned and to appreciate all forms of music because there is something in it for everyone, I believe. Absolutely. And and for me, I've come since I came at it from a rock background, but actually I've been listening to more country music lately uh, as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, you get exposed to all kinds of things, right? And mm -hmm. uh, especially in the, there's a, a kind of um, hybrid picking, country picking style that I, I've been experimenting with now too it's a completely different kind of a sound okay and that that's my friend jimmy actually playing with him because i know he play he plays a lot of that kind of country and then also kind of country rock stuff like the almonds and, and things like that yeah that's really cool you know that um now when you say country are you meaning a more modern country feel or would this be more of like your classic uh, uh 60s more classic country? country i would say Okay. Yeah. Uh, Even oh. earlier too, I like I love I love Hank Williams. Oh um, yeah. Like the songwriting is just so great. But other other people too. And I guess I don't know, is Bonnie Raitt considered country or is she just kind of adult contemporary as well? I, I think I would consider her more adult contemporary than I would country. Yeah. But you know, I also yeah. consider some of what Patsy Klein did as to be more contemporary as well. And when I hear a lot of modern country music it starts to become sound there's a kind of mushy area between the rock music of today like yeah and and the country music like that kind of happened when you uh you know dwight yoakam and even shania twain had a certain like that kind of like i don't know if you remember another that reminded me of shania twain was alana miles uh mm -hmm. and they were kind of interchangeable one's a little on the countryside the other's a little bit on the rock side but right that happens with music, right? They mush together, and then yes. you get new forms. Y you do. I mean, uh, we have uh, new styles of country that happen all the time now because of that. You've got stuff like uh, Brantley Gilbert, which is more of a southern rock, you know, uh, with some of the newer stuff. Or if you want to go the other route with uh, the pop style of uh, country that they have going on as well. So you've, you've got it all. I mean, music is always morphing and changing mm -hmm. and it changes with the times but i also like when i can find there are some of the uh singers that have that older feel to them like um greta van fleet has that right. uh, kind of led zeppelin feel to them you know they sound they, almost, but they but they deny it <laughs> oh yes they readily deny it but man uh, as soon as i heard them i was like wait what am i listening to because this this doesn't sound like something would be new on the radio but it was wonderful and i loved it and then you Black have pros did that too 20 years earlier as well yeah they did yeah um another one i don't know um have you listened to much of ghost yeah i have okay i just at first i was one of the ones that was like mm, i don't know if i really like this but their most recent album i think it's uh kaiserian is the name of it i believe uh, or maybe I'm not sure what the name of it is actually, but that new album actually, I liked it a lot. I couldn't find a song on there that I didn't enjoy. Oh, I'll have, to have it a listen. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know I, they're touring right now with one of my favorite bands, which has a, a, a kind of a country influence on them too. The but when you listen to them, mm -hmm. you would never know that there's a country influence on them. Uh, you know Mastodon. I do know Mastodon. And because yep. Brent, uh, they both use that hybrid picking style and it's all kind of banjo rolls and things they're doing, but they've got, you know, it's, it's the influences in there, but uh -huh. it's kind of from a, almost from a technique standpoint, you know, uh, now that you say that, up. yeah, I can hear that. And there's a, there are a couple straight up country tunes on the new album. There's one that's very kind of country meets that, uh, surf guitar. Okay. They've got, they've got you got a lot of stuff going on in their music. <laughs> the I, I think the big thing that got me into metal music was probably Metallica for one, but uh, one of the earlier ones I got into like the new metal. So I was into like Corn and Linkin Park and things like that a lot too. Cool. 
when I spoke with Elizabeth, she kind of was telling me a little bit about you and everything and how um, you've had a few things that have happened in your life that have um, a lot of people, I don't know that they could handle it the way that you have. And you have been able to bring music out of this. I know that you actually lost your wife. And um, did that fit into uh, your making of music as well? Well, when something like that happens, you, it, it, uh, it affects every aspect of your life. Right. Uh, I did write some songs on this record after, uh, Lisa died. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, those, those were difficult songs to write because you, if you're with someone so long and you think of them as your, uh, partially, you know, as your muse, yes. uh, you want to make sure it still works. Yes. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. There's a lot of things you have to make sure that they right. still work. Yeah. Um, so, and some of the songs I was working on uh, when she was sick mm -hmm. uh, were emotional songs for me too. Right. Uh, uh, and, and it's also in, in my music, I've also, it's music for kids. Yes. But it's also, uh, I don't know what you know about the story of Dinah's story. Um, but because it has a story about uh, a, an egg that hatches away from the other eggs and it's searching for its meaning in the world and trying to find its family. Okay. And so because there's some songs in Dinosaur that are just like fun songs like Spinosaurus, but there's also a uh -huh. series of songs that tell a story. And, and, and that character, so along the way, some of the characters, there's a character, uh, one of the main, so she meets all these other characters and they make this family of these different dinosaurs kind of helping each other out. And then at one point in the story, one of them dies. And uh, I guess working on that song was, was very difficult for me at that time. Right. Uh, be, just because just it's an emotional song for me. Yeah, I totally uh, get that. And uh, I guess writing new music was, was important for me to be able to do. Uh -huh. um, everything for... for for when, uh, also my, my wife died, she died by suicide. Uh, I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, it's, um, it has extra layers. So it, it, yeah. I found that I had to reclaim everything in my life. So yeah. the first was kind of like yeah. where I lived and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's really, a, it's an extremely difficult process, but you have to, uh, there's no way around it. You have to go through it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that that's a difficult, you know, situation to be able to, or that you had to go through and to see you come out on this side of it the way you have. I, I know, like you said, you've had some music that you've had to do that's difficult and it, that writing these songs were difficult for you to do. Um, do you feel that it was therapeutic to write them as well? Um. Well, it's something you go through for the rest of your life. Right. I yes. Think one thing you kind of you don't. Um, you, it's something that you learn. Uh, people talk about getting over things like this, but you kind of don't get over it. You learn no. to carry it with you. Right. And it's something that you carry, and 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 uh, for sure, there's something. There's I, I think there's something therapeutic, practically anything you do. Uh -huh. uh, at that point, like it's a, it's therapeutic to be able to get out of bed. Yeah. Uh, it's therapeutic yeah. to, you know, go for a walk. We got a dog. Uh -huh. we did, uh, so that, that was been great for me and my boys. And it means that we have to get out every morning and go for a walk. Right. Right. So someone, some, one of us does <laughs> at the beginning, we all did it every day. Right. But so yeah, doing it pretty much anything becomes therapeutic or hopefully becomes therapeutic. Yes it was really good to know that I still could write music. Yeah. I know that whenever you uh, emailed me today that you were saying, uh, you know, you were trying to plan around because you have to take your dog on a walk and stuff too. So hopefully I'm not taking too much time out of you being able to do that. No, it's no problem. Kyle took the dog out. My kids, my kids are so awesome. This is, this is uh, for the other parents out there. <laughs> <laughs> when you're negotiating getting a dog, we, I I, I bid very high. I said, you guys got to promise to do three morning walks a week. Oh, right? that's oh. six out of seven. 
right? Right, they yeah. Agreed. They agreed. So I was like, <laughs> this is awesome. And they've delivered. Uh, That's good. Which is, which is really like a test. They, they've had to, uh, it's been difficult for all of us, of course, and, and they've, they've been grown up and, and become such mature young guys. Kyle is 17 and Jake is, is 19. Lisa died in just before the pandemic. Uh, oh, wow. In late 2019. So uh-huh. Kyle would have been 14 then. Wow. So, and we got, and, and, uh-huh. uh, two days ago is our an- second anniversary of having Luna, our dog. Luna. Okay. Uh, so, and they've been, they, they've been, and the evening walks, we kind of just do whoever. And a lot of times we just go, we all love taking her out. So yeah, there's no, there's no beefing about it. And right. they, if we need to help each other out, we help each other out. Cause that's what you got to do. Right. It's healthy just to be able to get out in nature too. You know, I need to start doing that more often. And I try to, we, we were doing that for a minute. We were doing walks. We have a, a, a lake close by and we tried to start doing like evening walks and stuff around the lake, you know, cause it's not too far from our house and it's just healthy if not just physically, but mentally, you know, just to be able to get out in nature and do things like that. Well, both it's helped both physically and mentally. And when it helps you physically, it helps you mentally too. Right. Since I have you on here, is there anything that you would like to say to maybe your fans or maybe somebody who is an aspiring artist who's wanting to get their music out there? Do you have any advice for people like that? I guess there's a few things to practice your craft. Mm-hmm. This is the first thing you have to have something. This, I guess, there's a lot of things. It, it, specifically about music, mm-hmm. a, a lot of people are scared to really study music. Right. Uh, they think that if you learn theory and how music works, that'll somehow make you less creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't, I don't th- think that's true at all. Uh, it has nothing to do with how creative you're going to be. It, it just can help you. Uh, advance what you're doing much more easily because you have understanding about it. Um, I guess for music, you, it's it's you kind of have to go all in, uh-huh. in it's, because <laughs> the other people in music do as well. Right. Uh, and you got to also take. I guess people are now be- finally becoming aware of the importance of video. I know so many musicians that make a CD or an mm-hmm. album of music as it's called now. I guess they call them albums now. There's not CDs anymore, but they yeah. make a group of yeah. songs mm-hmm. uh, and then they don't they do not do a video. It's like once you've done the music, the promotion of it has to start. And, yes. and if you don't have a video to promote it with, like because I got into video mm-hmm. uh, and it took off, more people see, and, and, like I, when I, when I've talked to some people, I say, how much did you spend on your record on your recording? And they might say, you know, 10,000 or $15,000. They say now spend the same amount on a couple of videos. And they say, no, I can't do that. It's too much money. on it. <laughs> but it's really, uh, if you don't do that, something, uh, uh-huh. that's really, it, it, there's nothing really to, that you can, nor you can really get right. Not to be afraid to do it. You have to do it, showing up and doing things is is the most important thing if you don't do it nothing's gonna happen right yeah sometimes that's the biggest battle is just showing up yeah i've tried a lot of different things like i guess um i've worked at so many different things in music to not not feel that i on, always honor all the gigs that you are supposed to do and don't mm-hmm. take a gig if another better one comes paying along was always one i did but I guess it's different now in terms of uh, you really got to make you have to make some kind of impression from a video standpoint, I think. Yeah. Now, I think that I follow you on TikTok. You do do TikTok as well, don't you? We do. But TikTok is a bit of a mystery to us because with the kind of content that we do, Mm -hmm. it's not the kind of content that's on TikTok. But yes, we do. Right. It's it's as you know, every all the kids are doing it these days. Yeah, you kind of have to do it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but YouTube's not going anywhere. No, it's um, not. TikTok is all about being able to make content very quickly, and what I do takes a long time. Uh-huh. We've been re- we put a lot of the same content that we 
like repurposed and stuff and some more we're using it kind of more as a behind the scenes thing as well okay uh, so and we've just got just started doing it i guess in the last six months as well but my kids i think are a bit do you have kids i do i have two kids how old are they um i have a 12 year old and i have one that's about to be 11. and are they both big TikTok users um, they know what it is, but they're still a little too young to be on it as of right now. So, yeah. I think they, so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we try to uh, not let them get on the social apps and everything just yet. Very wise. Yeah. I mean, the Internet's a crazy place as it is. It's a crazy place for me, in fact. You know, so if I have a hard time navigating it, I don't want my kids to be subjected to that world just quite yet that makes sense uh i mean they are i mean they have the youtube and things like that you know and you've got to really even with youtube you've got to watch what is out there and so i am very thankful for people like you that actually have a you're not just creating content to create content there is a reason there's a message behind what you're doing and that is very important that there are people out there like you doing that. And I just want to tell you that I do appreciate what you do. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. And that that's exactly what we're we're trying to do. We also like to we don't like to shy away from things that are a little bit more uh, real. Mm -hmm. um, I know because a lot of because there's a lot of kids content that may not be uh, not dangerous in terms of the kind of content we think about that can be on YouTube that could be about all kinds of crazy stuff, right? That's right. not intended for children. But even the stuff that is intended for children, mm -hmm. sometimes I, I don't know, I do question the uh, the enrichment value that it has for the kid, yes, uh, as well as the emotional and imagination that you yeah. really want to be able to fire those things. And so from a musical standpoint, we like to make the same quality music that we would that I would make for anybody mm -hmm. that not not specific nothing dumbed down at all and it was right. funny because when you when you release an album on Spotify you can pitch songs to uh, the Spotify editors and these these editorial playlists are kind of a holy grail of getting onto these playlists so we do that every time and oh, we we're cool. hoping to get onto like one of the kids playlists but uh -huh. they put us on the hard rock playlist, like the one for adults. <laughs> <laughs> so we were on there with ACDC and uh, uh, the, the new, uh, you know, whoever is, you know, the new albums that had just come out. Right. Uh, so that, as a, that's what we try to do. We try to make the just really high quality content. And uh, we know uh, that the adults also appreciate that because responsible parents Mm -hmm. like yourself that are careful about what their kids are seeing on platforms like YouTube will mm -hmm. watch the content with their kids. Right. Uh, and we're conscious of that. So mm -hmm. we have to make music that is going to be engaging to any mind that wants to grow. I believe that music can enrich. And it's like, interesting. They do this. Uh, you know, you, they talk about the music math connection and they can measure brainwaves and how much music is stimulating your mind. Right. And two of the kinds of musics that were always at the very top were classical music mm -hmm. and metal. Yes. Uh, because there's so much going on in the music, right? I'm sure other musics would, like, I don't know if you've heard, you know, Snarky Puppy? I don't know that. <laughs> so that's something completely different. Check them out later. They're completely different. They're, they're the, the modern equivalent of what jazz has evolved into. Okay. Uh, you said and, Snarky uh, Puppy? Snarky Puppy, and there's okay. another band called Ghost Note, who's coming, I think, next week to Toronto, which is where I live, and I'm very excited. I'm going to get to go see them in a really small, sweaty little bar downtown, so that, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. And yeah, they both make uh, music that's definitely going to stimulate your brain. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, I, that's one thing I noticed, and uh, or, that I've seen... Uh, I think I watched it. So there was a documentary that I watched. Uh, this was quite a few years back, but it's called uh, Metal, A Headbanger's Journey. I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary before, but it kind of... I, I know the guy that made it. He lives in my neighborhood, Sam Dunn. Oh, really? Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I love how they actually said that, you know, um, classical music was the metal of that time period, too. You know, and it's because of the amount of complexity that there was in that type of music. You know, uh, people like uh, Beethoven and stuff would be like maybe in a band like Deep Purple or something like that, you know, because of their style. You know, those deep, thick bass notes that was unheard of in that time period when it came to music and so i i've always it gave me even a deeper appreciation for classical music whenever i heard that well the, those uh beethoven symphonies are pretty metal yes they are <laughs> and uh oh yeah i can i can sit there and listen to them i, I love it because you know there's so much it, it's a very rich sound you know, and I think that's one thing that I try to find in the different things that I listen to is I want that rich sound. Absolutely. So I was looking, I think it was online today, and you were advertising for your new album that's coming out. Are you going to be having it come out on cassette tape as well? Is that what I saw? Oh, you know what? Those. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, this Those is cool. Are, that's, a, that's, a vir- that's a virtual cassette tape. I think I've got one. I don't well, I think I have one as vinyl. My distributor uh-huh. sends out these uh, just for a promo. So it, it, it's an image that looks like it's a cassette tape. I do actually okay. have some CDs because uh-huh. some reviewers still want to hear it on CD. Right. Uh, people that are really into audio quality said, no, I won't take a link to MP3s or streaming it. Yeah. Send me a CD. Yeah. So we do make some CDs for, the, for those people. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, but that, that's, uh, that's a promo gimmick. Okay. Well, I I recently got last year my wife bought me it's like a 6 in 1, I guess it is, and it's a a record player and then it has a CD player on there and it has a cassette tape deck on the side of it as well. So anytime I'm able to find a cassette tape to put in there, I am always super excited. So I saw that and I was like, "Hmm, maybe I can get this on cassette." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't think there'd be a lot of demand for it, though. There's, you'd be the only one. I, I probably would be. But um, there is a band called Ice Nine Kills, and they have, they actually just sent, their newest album is called Welcome to Horrorwood, I believe it's called, or um, Silver Screams 2. And they actually came out with it on cassette tape. You could either get it on cassette, vinyl, or the digital download, I believe it was. And ever since then I've been like man I would like to find more cassette tapes for that because that would be really cool that's hilarious I hope it has Dolby on it yeah I mean it, I was kind of showing it to my kids because you know like I said they're 10 and 12 I'm like this is what I used to listen to music on whenever I was a kid and they're like what? That, what is that? you know and just kind of trying to explain it to them it's it's funny to see that look on their face because it just doesn't make sense to them at all. And, you know, telling them that, you know, you would wait till the right time on the radio. That way you could press record so you could get that song oh, that you wanted. Memory is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I've got all these recordings of partial versions of Iron Maiden songs like that. <laughs> that, that would be the because no one would play Iron Maiden on the radio when they came out. Right. Uh, when Iron Maiden came out, they were kind of like at the forefront of that thing, that new wave of British metal and totally mm-hmm. influenced like Metallica and bands like that. Yes. Um, and when they came out, no one would play them on the radio, so you couldn't record it. And then, mm-hmm. But then they had this thing on the rock station in Toronto where the top 10 at 10 and people would phone in for the day. They tally up the votes. And then so all the Maiden fans would just phone in. So like all, <laughs> all the Maiden fans would be on the top 10 at 10. So they had to play them. So I remember I'd always be waiting there to record all the other Maidens. That's really cool. Uh, you, know, that... my, you know what's funny is my, we had we were old. We were because we're musicians, and my and my my sister's a musician, and her husband was a musician. We all lived together in a, in another house. Mm-hmm. All our kids, uh, and we we started using cassette. We can't use cassette tapes very late on into, uh, I guess like into the probably into the two thousands even. It's mm-hmm. Crazy, but uh, I remember Jake. He was totally fascinated by the mechanism of the cassette. And there's a Fisher Price cassette. You know this thing? The Fisher yeah. Price cassette like, the DJ with the microphone, you know this thing? The the one like from back in the, 
like in the 90s? It's like a little Fisher Price one, and it was round, and we had that one too. Yeah. And you could yell into it, and you could record onto the tape. And I figured out if you cover it over the erase head, you could uh-huh. overdub on top of it. So you oh, could just yeah. record things over and over again on top of it. So yeah. It was pretty cool. But, but uh, Jake used to hang on top. He'd open up the cassette thing and reach up, and then the cassette would open up, and then he'd hang on it with his body. And it just drive my brother in law crazy because he's going to break it. But he was just fascinated by the mechanism, putting the tape in, taking the tape out, putting the tape in. <laughs> You saying that reminds me, um, whenever I couldn't find a blank tape to record with, I would put a piece of scotch tape, because they had those little squares on the bottom, and if they were broken off, then you couldn't record on that one, it wouldn't allow you to, and if you put a little piece of tape over it, then you could record on that, whether you're supposed to or not, and I had a few times where I needed to do that. Um, When I was a teenager... Um, living, I was kind of in the Memphis, Tennessee area, and they had a radio station that it always played completely different things than anything else you would find on the radio. And I went through a house and trance uh, music phase for a little while when I was a teenager, and that was the only place that I could find that type of music. And I had to do that so many times with a cassette tape to record that. That way I could have that. Because the only time you heard it was like at 10.30 on a Sunday night. Um, so, like you said, flooding memories right now. Old formats. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, you know, I hear my parents talk about some of the, the ways that they listen to music and everything. And I'm, I'm sure my kids... Uh, feel the same way that when they tell me about that. So, Sony Walkman. Did you use Sony Walkman? Oh, I did. Yes, I had a Sony Walkman, and then I had um, I had the CD version of it. You know, when it was supposed to be the anti-skip, and there was no anti-skip. Oh. It's still you put it in your pocket. Oh, you're gonna yeah. A portable <laughs> CD. It's just a bad idea. A portable CD player. It is because I mean it. You can't keep it still. And I, I think at one point before, uh, I had a car that did not have a CD player in it. And they had that cassette that you could buy to stick in there. And it had the wire that stuck out to where you could hook it up to a CD player. And uh, you'd go over a pothole and the CD would still skip, you know. <laughs> For sure. Since I've got you on here, I wanted to ask you a few other things before I get you off. Um I know you have the music that's coming up. Do you have any other things that you would like to announce that since I've gotten you on here that may be coming up? Well, actually, one of the things that is coming up is a new series because we have basically three series we're working on. Dinostory, uh-huh. which is about dinosaurs. Uh-huh. Prehistorica, which is other kinds of prehistoric animals, the woolly mammoths and that, that kind of stuff. And their new series, The Kraken, is actually the first a song in a new series and we're calling it mythologica uh oh cool I, that's the, the the new exciting project so and we're it's it's kind of wide open because the kraken is not a real animal so we're Correct. really open yeah. in the kind of stories that we can do uh yeah. so we're working now on another song uh about the the cyclops uh, oh. from ulysses uh-huh. uh which has been a lot of fun uh, i know my dad my dad is a a university uh, and he, he ta- taught a lot of classic stuff so he's been a, a a great resource for this but also it's i think pretty amusing for him to me be now writing songs about things that he's he's the expert in so uh <laughs> and so yeah there's all kinds of things we can do uh in mythologica so like there's the, we've been talking about doing a, a bigfoot song and, and uh and, and it's wide open for the different kinds of videos we can do and we're also thinking about doing some different video styles uh, Mm -hmm. because it's a completely new project. So it's pretty exciting for us. That that sounds really awesome. I I will be looking for that to come out. And uh, are you going to be doing the behind the scenes stuff with that as well? Uh, We will do some behind the, I think there's some already we've released from from the Kraken. Okay. Uh, We should do some behind the scenes stuff for Cyclops song because it's going to be pretty epic. It's yeah. a long, it's uh, so far it's our longest song cuz the, the the we're doing only chapter 9 of, of Ulysses is like it's ridiculous how long this thing is of course and it's already <laughs> in poetry uh, uh-huh. and chapter 9 I think is 60 pages and we 
we've reduced that to a six minute song so oh, it's wow. jam packed with stuff <laughs> man i can't wait to hear that that'll be really cool so if people want to follow what you do online how can they do that well you can if you go to our website you can get links to the thing and i think probably the best place to follow us mm-hmm. are on youtube okay uh, we also let you know about all the kinds of stuff there and if if uh on youtube we have our main channel which is the howdy tunes channel and we also have another channel called howdy tunes extreme but if you hit go on the our, our main channel like actually i think our link tree has links to all our channels we do uh a lot of the content we've also reported in spanish oh, cool. uh, which has been an amazing process uh we're i'm lucky to live in toronto which is extremely multicultural uh-huh. uh so and i was able to connect with people and uh, also in the Brazilian community here. So we've done the songs in Portuguese as well. Oh, wow. Uh, I get to, and I, I've been studying Spanish for a while too. And so I get coached a little bit, but I've done a lot of the singing myself on it. So, and my writing partner, Jimmy's done a whole pile of it too. He doesn't really speak Spanish, but he's really good being a musician. He's really good at imitating things. So mm-hmm. uh, that's been an amazing process. Um, <laughs> And, and whatever streaming platform you listen to, uh-huh. uh, music on, we're on all those. So Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, all those all those links should be on our, our website, which is our link tree. Wow. And okay. you can follow us on you know Instagram too, with all those things. Instagram, Facebook, all those places. Oh yeah. <laughs> How is it with the translation on that? Because you're, you, you're, you, you do it in Spanish and in Portuguese too. Is, is it a, a literal translation or is, do you have to kind of change it up a little bit to make more sense for them in that? Cause I know that like with yeah. TV shows that happens a lot. Um, if like it, my son watches anime, so the literal translation of some of the things doesn't compute to English. So how hard is it trying to get that, the lyrics and stuff changed over to these other languages? It's really hard. Uh, the, the, cause when they do translations on, on TV, they're either it's being done by a machine, mm-hmm. um, or it's being done just as a literal translation by someone. Right. Uh, now when you're doing music, it's gotta mm-hmm. be in the same time. Yep. Like it has a certain amount of, uh, even, even the, the different brachiosaurus in, yes. is brachiosau, uh, brachiosaurio. It's uh, in Spanish. It's brachiosaurio. I had to sing it to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so yeah, different. So you, you have and, and you want it to rhyme. Right. So often what happens is we get one translation, then and I'll get together with the guy who translates it. It's, his name is Saul Torres. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of hash it out and, uh, we throw it up and then we, and then we'll get different ideas. I remember we had one, like, for example, Stegosaurus, Stegosaurus walking through the forest. It is in English. And uh-huh. he was saying, caminando por el bosco, bosque, as a caminando por el bosque, which would be in Spanish. Uh-huh. And, uh, that just wasn't working. Wasn't working. I thought, what are, uh, so then, and then, but there's another word uh, instead of uh, caminando, uh, mm-hmm. or uh, you can say, uh, or caminandar, uh, uh, you can say andar, mm-hmm. which is a cuts a syllable off. So you have to like play with it. it also means the same thing. They both mean to walk. Okay. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's really tricky. Uh, and it, it, what's really interesting is sometimes it ends up being more beautiful in the translated language. And sometimes it's not as good in the translated language. So, for instance, one of the songs, which in English is Parasaurolophus, is a mouthful for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, so, and it's all about wordplay. That one was really hard to translate and have it work really well in Spanish. I think yes. it worked pretty well. It worked a little bit better in Portuguese. But <laughs> the song that, that we did called The Egg is much more beautiful in Spanish. Just because it's such a brilliant translation and the words are more poetic in Spanish. So it's, for me, that was some of the magic that happened in those translations is that when it was actually better in the translated language. That's cool. 
Man, hearing you talk about this, I, I I love it because I can I can just hear the appreciation for the music in in what you're saying, you know, and uh, that means a lot to me as a musician myself. I I play a few different instruments. I was raised in a um, in a family that was very um, musically inclined. My mom plays the piano. My dad plays the guitar. I played the bass guitar. We all sang together, you know. So hearing you talk about this. It's in a way that I would probably, it's right on my level, and I love hearing you talk about this. Thanks, Jared. I appreciate that. Right before we get you off of here, um, is there anything else that you wanted to maybe uh, bring up before I get you off of here? I can't think of anything really. Up, up, up. <laughs> to be honest, we've, we've strayed off into all kinds of interesting areas. It's been great talking with you. Yeah. Uh, if there's any anything else you're curious about, I'm I'm happy to, to talk about it. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm I'm. The cool thing about this show is, you know, it's called "If You Give a Dad a Podcast," so this show could go pretty much anywhere. Uh, we kind of based it off of the book. Uh, if you give a mouse a cookie, you know, uh, then he wants a glass of milk. Right. You know. So it's uh, that's kind of the way I have this what, show. What instruments do you play? I play the bass guitar. The guitar, um, the French horn, um, the drums. Ooh. Yeah, I, I played French horn in uh, band in school. Uh, that was a uh, that was a lot of fun. I actually miss playing the French horn. My beginning band director was a professional French horn player for the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. So he was a very big stickler on perfection when it came to playing that instrument, and. Um, I, I definitely miss playing that a lot. That was probably one of my favorites. And then let's see, I played the trumpet a little bit, and I know how to play the mandolin and a little bit on the saxophone. My aunt gave me a saxophone, and I'm one of those I I, I play by ear, so I kind of just picked it up and started playing with it and figured out how to play it. I'm not sure exactly what I'm playing, but I know it sounds right. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, I, I've I've been around music my whole life. Um, I'm actually a a pastor's son, and so I was raised around church. I I was raised around music in church, you know, and so I played instruments in church. You know, I started out playing the drums, and then I moved to the bass, which the bass is one of my favorite things to play. I just I, I love being able to just walk the bass, you know, and just it, it's so much fun and it's therapeutic for me. So did you, was it a gospel situation? It was, yes. Um, we actually have a, um, my parents have copies of it and everything, but we have a gospel album out that they, you know, they sell out of their home and everything like that. It was never put on any major um, streaming service or anything like that. It was just something that they did, you know, um, out, of, out of our home. But, uh, yeah, we did gospel music, uh, a lot of Southern gospel style. Um, I don't know if you're so familiar we, with, like, the Gaithers and things like that. Well, my question, I'm curious about, because I've had a couple times, my, my, my dad is a, is a pastor as well. Okay. Uh, and, uh, but he comes, he's Anglican, so it's a much more structured kind of music that they have in those. Because my sister directed music at the, at the church that my that, that my family went to okay um and so i i went i would fill in for my sister um mm -hmm. and I, and she just sometimes hired me to come down and and, and play uh, play at the services as well okay but uh but i've had a couple of gospel experiences did you have to sometimes like would you be playing bass in the gospel and in, uh, in the with the band at the, in church yes yeah so, um, so did you, was it always organized tunes or did you sometimes just kind of have to follow what was going on? Most of the time it was just follow what's going on, man. That so you kind of develop a, a, a understanding of harmony just by that, by doing that sort of thing. That's kind of like a intuitive understanding of harmony, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That's and so then interesting to me. we, and it was almost to the point where, you know, it was me and my mom and my dad. And so I could actually, we had gotten to the point where I could just look at them and I could pretty much tell you what was going to happen next when it came to what we were playing. That happens with me and my son, Jake, all the time. It's in a different situation, but we're playing jazz with each other. Uh-huh. 
we just start, sometimes we just start looking at each other. And, well, and actually, we, we generally kind of just know what each other is going to do. Yeah. Because you, you, you kind of log the hours with someone and you just start to understand everything about them. Yep. It's it's definitely it's an unspoken language that you build with somebody, and mm. uh, I, I, one thing that I've noticed with playing with people that you were um, family with or that you've grown up with, or even hearing people that play music together that have grown up with, there's a almost a deeper form of harmony, and that's there that you don't always find in other music. Now, I'm not saying it's not that it's impossible to find. It's just you see it a lot more whenever it's a a family that plays together. There's because they do have that unspoken language that they have about themselves whenever they're playing music together. Well, I, th- I can't think of any band I've been in that doesn't have kind of some sort of elements of family to it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's very much like a each band is like a little family too. It is, um, yeah. With all its problems and, uh, but all its love too, right? And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's kind of like, and, and you have to get a special feeling when you play music with each other. I think that's one of the the most. Uh, uh, that was actually the whole purpose of my the the thing that got me in before Howdy Tunes was the Rainbow Song, which is these programs where people in the community come together and they they sing songs together, right? It's actually providing some of the same functions that church does in gospel music. Yeah. Uh, uh, but in a secular way. Right. Uh, <laughs> so they, you know, and, and I, I see people all the time just becoming great friends just from coming to that class. And part of it is they're coming to the class. But the other part and the important part is that they're making music together. Like yes. everybody that comes to the program has to sing. And like when you go to a, I was at a wedding on the weekend, it was a it was a Jewish wedding, mm-hmm. and the the band came out and started playing horns right in the middle of everybody where they're dancing. Oh and, wow! Uh, it was powerful. So like a big five piece horn section in the band, and they all just started marching into where everyone was dancing and playing right with them, like mm-hmm. trombones and trumpets and stuff. That's oh, cool. It's powerful. Yes, yeah. it is. That is. Music together with people, it's just brings it together and creates a bond, right? It does. Yeah. I, I actually was in another band. Uh, it's a guy that I've known for years. We worked together at one job, and then he left, and then I left, and then we ended up working together again somewhere else. And um, I joined his band, and I played the drums for him. We were already friends, and we were close, but when we started playing music together, it was you could feel that a deeper bond developing there as well. And the, the, most of the music that I've played has been some form of Christian music. Uh, the one that we had was more of a kind of folk, folk style music. And, you know, I had, um, I, I played the drums for him with that. There's something about music that it's a very important part of not only my life, but I know it's an important part of your life. And I don't know where the world would be today if we didn't have music. I, I believe music can can just change things for the better, right? Yeah. That's why I've dedicated my life to it. Yeah. I, I totally 100% agree with you. Music can change a lot of things. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, it has been wonderful talking to you tonight. I can't wait to hear your new album that's coming out. And... Um, I can't wait to see what's happening next. I'll, I will be looking into all of your stuff on YouTube and make sure that everybody else goes and looks this stuff up as well. Thanks very much, Jared. It's been great talking to you. It's September 30th, everybody. You can hear the whole record, but you can also just follow us on YouTube and hit that notification button, and I think you'll get notified of when things come out too. All right, that sounds great, man. I will talk to you later. Thanks, Jared. So a day or so after I had Mike Whitla on, he actually sent me a couple of songs. You've heard one of them during the interview, and that one is called Brachiosaurus. I'm going to actually play you one of my favorites on here, and then we'll go to the end of the show. Um, But this one is a lot of fun, and like I said, it's my favorite. So if you guys are ready, here's The Kraken. Long ago, deep in the ocean, there was a beast that even the mighty Thor feared. I'm the Kraken, crushing your spine. I'm the Kraken, your life is mine. From underneath the sea, I search for my prey. No room, I like to play with food. 
Oh yeah yeah yeah. My name is Cat's Pajamas, aka Cat's PJs. I'm the host of a show called Creative Podcasts, where we talk all things music, musicians, musicianship, music, influences, music backstories, where the origins, where they come from, what do they do, what are they doing now? So if you're into music, if you listen to music, come on over to Creative Podcasts, where all the cool cats are hanging, baby. We'll talk about your favorite artists, your favorite songs, conspiracies to funny things, this, that, finger snaps, hand claps, all genres of music, eclectic, electric, and nothing like you'd expect it. So come on over to Creative Podcast and tune in, baby. We'll see you there. everybody i hope that you enjoyed that episode with mike whitla along with some of the songs that he allowed me to play on the show i'm really excited that i'm able to do that and uh yeah i had a great time talking with him i am definitely going to have him back on we had a few subjects that we didn't really dive into that we want to talk about uh this time it was more of a just a get to know him episode but we will talk with him more here in the near future Um, I can't wait to have him back on. I can't wait to see where this music goes because I might be a grown adult, but I am a definite fan of Howdy Tunes. Um, I'm seriously thinking about getting some merch myself because it's uh, pretty cool stuff. And I, like I said, I just can't wait to see where it goes in the future. So over the next few weeks, I have some pretty cool episodes coming up. Next week, I have with me MJ Bell. He is a referee out of... Uh, the Texas area, I believe, but he also does um, refereeing and stuff for different companies, and one of them is Game Changer Wrestling. Uh, I can't wait to have him on. It's going to be a lot of fun to talk with him. The week following that, I have Philip Douthit. He is the men's marriage counselor. Um, I think he's going to bring a unique perspective to the show. I can't wait to have him on. Then the week after that, I am going to have in two really awesome dudes. They are the Johnnies. Toxic Masculinity are going to be in studio in my garage recording with me. We are going to talk about comic books and anything and everything else that we can think to talk about. I am very excited about that episode and I can't wait to present it to you guys. I'm sure that you guys will be excited to hear that one as well. So, yeah, I have some pretty cool stuff lined up. If you guys would like to follow me online, you can do so um, on Facebook, and that's at I-Y-G-A-D-A-P, and that's the acronym for If You Give a Dad a Podcast, or you can just look up If You Give a Dad a Podcast. You can also follow me on Instagram, and that's at Give a Dad a Podcast, and you can also follow me on Twitter, and that's at DadPodcast11. Um, I usually update all of those pretty regular and, uh, you know, just kind of keeps you up to date with what's going on with the show. I will have some special episodes that are going to be coming up over the fall. Uh, I'll be announcing those. And so I'm pretty excited to see where this show goes. I'm getting all kinds of feedback from people who either want to be on the show or people who just enjoy listening to the show. And uh, if you're hearing this episode, why don't you go out there and rate it, review it, tell me what you think. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. You can also send me an email, and that's at giveadatapodcast at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from my listeners and knowing what you guys want to hear. Um, Shoot me a line. I've got some great things that are coming up here in the near future. I just reached 1,000 downloads in the last few weeks. I'm well on my way to 5,000 now. And, uh, yeah, so we'll have something to celebrate coming up. I may be having merch um, being designed here soon as well. So you guys keep a lookout for that as well. If you guys want to do a Rad Dad shout-out, you know you can do that where you send in a... where you brag on a dad. It doesn't even have to be your dad. Just... A, a guy that who has stepped up there and been that dad when you know he didn't have to be is fine. Or if it's just a, a your dad and you just want to tell him thank you, you can do that. 
I also have where you can do a proud parent shout out, and that's where a parent can brag on one of their kids if they want to do so. I always love having things like this on my show. So just send me a line and let me know who you want to brag on, if it's a dad or your kid or whoever it is. And uh, yeah, or if you just want to reach out and say, hey, I like your show, please do so. I love hearing from people. So I'm going to bring this show to a close. I love doing this. I thank you guys for all of your support. And I can't wait to bring more episodes to you. I love you guys. You have a wonderful week. And I will see you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed our show, come back next week. You know you want to come back. You might get some laughs. Stop chirping crickets!